remember the first time that I went that uh, I was very young and uh, he uh, I spent most of my time just sitting behind my uh, my grandfather and way down close to the ground I was almost whimpering because it was so hot and uh, but later on I was able to sit through a whole series of uh, going into the sweat lodge uh, four times uh, four separate times during the course of uh, the day uh, the traditional way <laughs> While I was growing up, I spent a lot of time with the, uh, the very old and elderly uh, relatives and uh, in the sweat lodge particularly when uh, the old uh, elderly men would want to do a sweat lodge, um, my grandfather used to invite me along and he would say to me in the language of our people, "Can't touch it, huh? And I'd be re ready to go. Remember the first time that I went, that uh, I was very young, and uh, he, uh, I spent most of my time just sitting behind my uh, my grandfather, and way down close to the ground, I was almost whimpering because it was so hot. And uh, but later on, I was able to sit through a whole series of uh, going into the sweat lodge uh, four times, uh, four separate times during the course of uh, the day, uh, the traditional way. But uh, my grandfather really uh, let me have the opportunity to uh, be among the old gentlemen of that of the uh, our relatives. And uh, some of these uh, men were uh, either came back from Huelte, which was Fort Sumner, or they were born shortly thereafter. And they knew a lot of the uh, traditional stories that we don't have uh, a, a whole bunch of them anymore. We have some, but there's not very many. But inside the sweat lodge, you had the opportunity to learn about things. And one of the things that I've mentioned, and I've uh, been given a lot of response on our posting it is the uh, subject of fear now I've uh, had the opportunity to kind of review some of the thoughts and comments and that and then also comparing them to the things that are that my elderly relatives used to say and that and the teaching was that fear is actually a uh, uh, someone said there needs to be new words or new language uh, to talk about some of these things in these modern times, but that's not so, because uh, truth as it is, is truth today, tomorrow, and forever. It doesn't change. Truth does not change. It's built on a lot of uh, reasoning and logic, and uh, so it's always the same. And so when we talk about fear, a lot of times people think that love is the opposite of hate, but really it, it's uh, to the way that I was uh, instructed was that uh, fear is the opposite of love because it is the fear that people have that they learn to hate. And so if they fear certain things, they can become people that hate. And so it is that fear is actually the first one. And um, there was a time when we discussed uh, in the sweat lodge uh, a subject in that that uh, could probably be labeled a discussion of the tree of life. And uh, the um, elderly relatives and that talked about the tree of life and the fruit that it bears and the and the fruit that comes off of uh, the tree of life as they explained it is the fruit of love and uh, of kindness and uh, consideration and respect and that and those things are to be thought of as uh, as the love in a way that 
it is not to love all people, but actually to love your, your maker, your giver, your deity. And so it was that uh, love was explained in, in that way that uh, it was what you found as the fruit of the tree of life is that of uh, love. And so the uh, teaching of our people, the elderly and the ancient teaching was very serious in that way, is to love your maker, your giver, your deity, your holy people, and to be able to do the things that the holy people instruct. You know, that's what they used to say, is that uh, being obedient uh, to the, uh, the wishes of the holy people. And so it is that fear is uh, thought of in a way that it is the opposite of love and that from fear comes hatred. And so those are the things that we are told. Yeah,